Peter ons toch een bykie hoor gaan my hond jy gehaal die hoor gaan my hond jy gehaal 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 Han hizir tevsen, yunder tevsen gidi, bitu tachot tsagirse. Ye mo chasta hor khaim dite va daim do. Tsagirse o tras. Ata ta hor ga tachot khirte ba nafsu. Ye do khir. Khir bokhon tenik. Tevsen dim bodo. Khaim zamak dos kha zo. Ket gat gat bakh ko nafsu. Otte zamda gatsun mo khor jirso bokhko dim bitu tsagirse. Ye amos bodon zo. Хэр, түүйшэг, та үүрх амдарлэг хотохоу хэлцаг хэлсээ. Бид нэр, нэр хүн надаас бүдий уолжар хэг хүүбай тасууж ээсээ. Дэгээд тэр нэ, хэлээ гэхээ надаттай, надад халзуу гаа асуултан харуул болноуг сүүг та. Та хэм дахэн түрсэй мүү, армэсэй мүү, та хэм болхан хэтэгдэй мүү. Ос, Тайм надад намаг өр хэнгэж тоцоол гэй. Намаг өр надад үнцэр үүдгэн үүхүү үүгээр бүтл. Асуус нэ дарагаар би тэнэг шайша нарвчудуғу үүгүй үүшийн тэхуулмаад. Гэлмэж лэнгээр бэдний амдэрдэй өөчлөө гэржэнаа. Энэ эрчоуға өдрүүд бэржоуға болхан сэржоуға үүсүүд ил. Таний Тэвэд үшчаас хамтадаа зайх бараа өөрин сүүсээд үүнд таатхээн. Үүгээд энэ зайвэд жаа бар та зайвэг аваас гэд үлдэжийн. Та ол үлдэжийн бар та ол үлдэг аваас гэд үлдэжийн. Тэний мэдлэг чин дүлдэжийн бар та түүн өс түүний тэнэх мэдлэг үлдэж аваас гэд үлдэжийн. Өрх so let the kingdom come. Then we receive the kingdom. As we receive the kingdom, we give more and more space for the kingdom. That's why we have to open our hearts. God has to enlarge our hearts. Tuna Bakare says. Do like this. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> more, more space. <laughs> because the kingdom is so big. And our hearts can be so small. And so fearful. So insecure. And so timid and <laughs> suspicious sometimes. So we have to make space for him. The more we make space, the more he will regulate and rule and govern our lives. Rule our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. So his thoughts will come. Amen. Amen. So he will invade our lives, rule our lives. And then he will take me where he wants me to be. He will not draw me by the hair, you know, come with me. No. He will invite me, come with me, walk with me. That's how we can become unstoppable. Now, some Christians say, I am unstoppable. Maybe yes, maybe no. Because as individuals, we are not unstoppable. If the light goes, we have a problem already. <laughs> no video. <laughs> You cannot see my beautiful face. <laughs> my face. <laughs> so you know, we have we are limited. But the more the kingdom fills us, 
The more unstoppable we become, because we are not unstoppable, but the kingdom is unstoppable. So the more kingdom I carry, the more unstoppable I, be, I become. The more kingdom the church makes space for, the more unstoppable the church will become. The more kingdom there is in our prayers, the more unstoppable our prayers will become. I don't have to scream prayers. I don't have to say 15 times in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name, in Jesus name. <laughs> the devil does not care. But the more kingdom you carry, the more kingdom there will be in your words. And he will smell that. He will smell that fragrance of heaven. He will smell the same fragrance in you that was in Jesus himself. And he was unstoppable. All his prayers were answered. Amen. Amen. In the same way, your prayers will become unstoppable. But for that to happen, the kingdom must come. You must receive kingdom things. You must make space for kingdom things. You must let the kingdom govern your life. Amen. And you must let the kingdom take you where the kingdom wants to lead you. Then, then, oh, then, our life will become powerful. And we will know that is not because of our own strength. It's because of his kingdom inside of us. Amen. So let's let's pray the prayer, let's receive the kingdom, let's make space for the kingdom. Let's give him the government of our lives. Yeah, but I, I don't know if I dare to do that. <laughs> I don't know if I dare to do that. Remember, he's a good king. Amen. Kingdom of peace and mercy and strength. So, so let peace rule your life. Let joy rule your life. Let joy overcome sadness. We can have sad days, yes. We can have days with disappointments. But joy and peace can overrule that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Peace is which surpasses all understanding. So there is a river of peace flowing in our heart. So you know, his government is different from human government. That's why sometimes we think, oh, let God govern my life. It's because we think human government. We think he will dominate us. We think he will force us to do things. No. His government is the government of peace and joy and righteousness. Amen. Amen. Paul said so. 
kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink, but a matter of peace, of righteousness, peace and joy. I want righteousness to govern my life. I want peace. Peace to rule my life, rule my emotions and inner man. Yeah. I want joy to rule my life when I'm sad and depressed or whatever. King joy. <laughs> Amen. It was King David and King Joy. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth and King Peace. <laughs> That's the government. I want that government. So don't fear the governor. Because the governor is your father. You know when the when the king is a king, his children they go in and out. All the others, they have to make appointments and go through security. And... But the children of the king, they can walk into the office. Open their school bag. And make their homework. On the king's desk. <laughs> if somebody else does, does that, they will be kicked out. <laughs> so our king is our father. <laughs> our king is Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So remember that. It takes a little bit more than just let your kingdom come. <laughs> Christians, they love easy solutions. And quick solutions. Have you ever heard of a marriage seminar called Two Steps to a Successful Marriage? <laughs> Don't register to that. <laughs> if the seminar is two million steps to a successful marriage, you can join that one. <laughs> <laughs> there is no easy solution. There is no easy marriage. There is no easy church. There is a walk. Amen. We have to position ourselves for that walk. So let the kingdom come, receive the kingdom, make space for the kingdom, let the kingdom rule more and more. When you feel anger is coming up like a volcano, <laughs> like when French people are driving cars in the traffic, <laughs> yeah. then dead peace, <laughs> government of peace take over. <laughs> Yeah. It's practical. The kingdom of God is practical. It's usable. It's daily. It's a daily life thing. So let the kingdom begin to rule. Then let the kingdom take you. Where the kingdom wants you. Just to use you to flow through your life to somebody else. Okay. So that was your introduction. Because some, I'm, sometimes I can be frustrated when I hear Christians speak about easy solutions because it's so unreal. We have to live a real life. 
Life is not easy. Church is not easy. Oh, but praise the Lord, hey, worship is not easy. Oh, I just raise my hand and sing. Okay. You can do that. But I know worship is not that easy. When Christians say, oh, I look forward for heaven, we will worship him for all eternity. I'm thinking, yeah, right. Let's begin with half an hour and see how you are doing that. <laughs> oh, half an hour, that's difficult. <laughs> then don't go to heaven. <laughs> Don't go to heaven, it's not that easy. But we can learn it. Because the Holy Spirit is a good teacher. He will teach you everything. How to worship, how to pray. How to walk. How to live. How to represent the kingdom. How to work in a profession, at the office, at the mechanic, at the supermarket. He will teach you all things. All things is all things. Amen. All things is all things. So it's also practical life. All right? Okay, that was my introduction. Back to Joshua 24. Joshua 24. There is something about Joshua which is appealing to me, making me curious. Because even he had ups and downs like anybody else. He had. If you read his book, you will see. Joshua had good times and he had difficult times. So the men and women of God are not supermen or spidermen or whatever. They are not super champions. We are the champions. <laughs> no. They are normal people. Because they have received the kingdom. They space for the kingdom. Welcome the government of the kingdom. They have let the kingdom take them some places. They become unusual people. Doing unusual things. And having unusual influence. But they were normal people. They were not half God, half man. They were 100% men. The so we can identify with them. We can identify with them. So Joshua was a normal man. But in him, the Bible says there was a different spirit. There was something different. Caleb the same. That's why the two made it. Because in them there was something different. There must be something different in you and me. Can, can you say yes? There must be something different. That's why we must let the kingdom come. It will make us different. So Joshua was a special person because there was something inside of him which made him different. I'm sure you had a normal life, everyday life. I'm sure you had a normal everyday family and marriage and children and 
Good days and bad days. But there was a spirit in Salohim. There was a river in Salohim. Which made him different. I'm sure he did mistakes. I'm sure he made wrong decisions from time to time. But still, there was a river in Salohim. Guiding him. Taking him some places. So Joshua is a very important person. That's why we studied Joshua 24. And that chapter is so interesting. Because this old man spoke. And one of the things he said, as you know, is me and, me and my house will be served the Lord. Joshua is, is famous for that statement. But, but, but if you think about it, it's a strange statement. Because maybe he died that day. Who knows? So why say me my house will serve the Lord? Maybe he died the next day. We don't know. That was the end of his life. Maybe he died five minutes after he said Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Doom. Go to heaven. <laughs> So why say me and my house will serve the Lord? Why not just sit down, Joshua? Oh, Joshua, sit down and relax. We know, we know your heart. We know you serve God. We know the river inside of you, the river of the kingdom inside of you. No, he stood up and said, me and my house will serve the Lord. That's, that's because of the spirit inside of him. That spirit knows no age. That spirit speaks what is right. When you are 14 or you, or you are 104, if that spirit inside of, if it's inside of you, that spirit will speak. That's why Joshua just proclaimed that. Without a microphone, without a video recording. But it was recorded anyway. So Joshua 24 is such an amazing chapter. Because of who he is. Even in the last moments of his life, he was still that person. Alright? Who was he? You tell, let me tell you who he is. He was a forerunner. He was a forerunner. That's the word I've been hearing for months. And I told the young people at the GC in England, and I told my church, and I told, it, I told my church in Denmark, I told the church, the people in, in Romania, and I want to tell you as well, God is looking for foreigners. Amen. Let me say it again. God is looking for foreigners. Not just runners, but foreigners. Which means somebody who is running with him, with the kingdom. And he is or she is fully conscious 
that somebody is running after them. Тэр гүйж байгаа тэр эргэтэй эмгтэй хүн бурхдаа хамт гүйж байгаа тэр хүн бол үнэхээр өөрөө мэдж байгаа миний би миний арт хүмүүс гүйж байгаа гэдэг мэдж байгаа тэр хүн. That's a place of responsibility. Энэ бол л хариуцлагын байрсан. Because you can see people running, you know, fitness runners in the street. За хүмүүсийг гүйж байгааг та нар хардагтай гадаар Listening to their iPhones. iPhone-оос сонсоод гүйж Sweating all wet. <laughs> but nobody is following them. Actually, maybe somebody should try to follow them. <laughs> One, two, five, ten, fifteen. Are they following me? <laughs> you can be a runner. And just running for yourself. But God wants more than that. He's looking for foreigners who become conscious that I have a responsibility. I cannot, I cannot run the way I want because somebody is running after me. I cannot live the way I want because somebody is picking up my example. Timothy was such a forerunner. That's why Paul wrote to him. Because it's not an easy thing to be a forerunner. So Paul had to write two letters to him. Timothy do well. Timothy, store up the gift which is inside of you. Timothy, do not be fearful. Timothy, do not let anybody despise you because of your age. But be an example for all believers. In love, in faith, in conduct, in Lifestyle, in words, attitudes. That's a big one. Joshua was a forerunner. Amen. Amen. When he walked through the wilderness, people stopped following. Only two crossed over. So now Joshua wanted people to follow his example. So tonight I want to finish this chapter here. Alright. So go, God is looking for foreigners. Are you listening to me? And if, you, and if you say yes to that call, whatever your age, whatever your gender, whatever your life story, whatever your childhood and the family you came from, if God calls you, God called you. Don't look at your parents, look at Him. Don't look at your husband, look at him. Don't look at your wife, look at him. If he calls you, he calls you. You must, you must hear the call. And decide what you do with that call. I heard that call when I was 14 years old. I had no clue what to do. Because nobody knew. But today, you are privileged. Because some of us, we know. I don't blame my parents. They didn't know better. It's okay. Because if you don't know, you don't know. If you are blind, you are blind. If you are deaf, you are deaf. You cannot blame the blind people because he does not see. But today we know. Better. Today we see clearer. Today 
today we hear clearer. So we know what to tell you if God calls you to be a foreign. We know how to invest in you. We know how to train you and sharpen you. I had to run into hundreds of walls before I found the door. But you don't have to do that. Because some of us, we have found the doors. The open doors. We have found the, the open path God has prepared for us. So you are privileged. But together with privilege, there is responsibility. If you don't know, you can say, I didn't know. But if you know, you cannot say, I didn't know. The only thing you can say is, I didn't want it. <laughs> Better than that, you can say, I want it. I, I don't know where it, where it will take me, but I want to be forward. I know where it will take you. Bring you to a place where people will begin to follow you as you follow Christ. Amen. 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 So here we have a foreigner. And the whole nation present themselves to go. Yesterday I gave you some few thoughts. I say, take a stand. Remember that? Yeah, take a stand. That's that's the challenge in Joshua 24. Me and my house will be served alone. What about you? So there is an implicit call. Take a stand. One, once Moses said, on God's behalf, I place before you blessing and curse, life and death. Choose life. Take a stand. Jesus said, follow me. And then he walked. And then, are they following or are they not following? They had to take a stand. Maybe some of them thought, who is he? We know him. They had to take a stand. Take a stand. The second thing I said to you is consider what God does. Not what has happened. You Remember that? Oh, this happened to me last week. Since last time you were here, so many bad things has happened. I was sick three times. I broke a tooth. Then I had so much headache and... Okay. <laughs> Let's bring it to an end. <laughs> Since I was here last time, what has God done? Uh -huh. Oh God, you mean God? Yeah, God. G-O-D, God. <laughs> oh, you know him? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know what he did. That's a problem. That's a big problem. Joshua 24. There is no mention of you know all the problems, all the plagues in Egypt, or all the grasshoppers and darkness and the Nile was changing to blood. And Joshua 
What has happened has happened. But the interesting thing is, what did God? Did he do something? Did he say something? What did he say? Let me know what he said. Tell me what he did. Uh -huh. That's why I said to the, to the young people in Beijing, don't be sorry about what happened. What that happened has happened. But find out what he does, what he's doing, what he's saying. A lot can happen in nine days, even in Beijing. Can you believe it? <laughs> Anything can happen in Beijing. God is everywhere. And because God is everywhere, He can talk everywhere. He can work everywhere. He can call you everywhere. He can give gifts everywhere. So focus on what God does. The disciple on the way to Emmaus. Oh, Jesus died. Oh, Jesus was not happened. Jesus was not interested. He was interested in what the Father was doing. Okay. Number three, I gave you yesterday is. Engage his plan. Engage his plan. Because God said, I've done this for you, I've done this for you, I've done this for you, I've done this. I am working for you. When will you begin? So when will you begin to work with me? You face the enemy, I gave you the victory. You had problems, you had no water, I gave you water. You were screaming. I told you to shut up and walk. <laughs> That's not in the Bible. So God said to, to them, I have done everything for you. When are you beginning to work with me? Engage my plan. Next thing I said was protect your heart. He said to them, be sincere and faithful. Fear God, protect your heart. Protect your attitudes. I move quick forward. Join others. He said, me and my house, we will serve him. There is a joining together. Okay? Remove wrongness. Wrong, wrong things. He said, remove the false gods in your life. Uh -huh. Throw them out. Get rid of them. Amen. Amen. Okay, so remove the wrong things. God will help you with that. Because wrong things might not be a problem now. But in the light of God's plan in the future, what, what is not a problem now can become a problem later. Uh -huh. Let's say you have, a, you have, you have, you are materialistic in your attitude. And now you don't have much money. So it's not a problem. 
But when the but the day you have hundred thousand US dollars in your pocket, that will become a problem. <laughs> because the hundred thousand dollars might disappear in two months. Oh no, 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 it will not happen to me. Okay. There is a statistic about people who win in the lottery. Most of them have nothing after just a few years. Nothing. All is gone. So don't dream about winning the lottery. <laughs> dream about having a clean heart. <laughs> because when God sees that, He might help your finances. Because you don't have a seed or whatever it is, which could become a problem later. Okay, Joshua 24, are you still there? Okay, let's finish this in this first session, then I have to move on to the four ones. So let's come to verse. Verse 18, the end of verse 18. That's after Joshua said, Be in the house where you serve the Lord. Then the people said, We also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. Joshua, his house, serve the Lord. Everybody, serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's go home. <laughs> Joshua was an old man. Like me. He was older than me. I hope. <laughs> so he knew something about people. Remember, he saw thousands die in the wilderness. The same ones who were dancing and playing the tambourine after they crossed over the Red Sea. Here, yeah, everybody was dancing. Samba, whatever. <laughs> Fox Trot, Holy Rover. Fox Trot, <laughs> The same people who were dancing, later they were under the same. <laughs> So, Joshua was a man of faith, yes. He had a different spirit, yes. But he was real at the same time. Not only about the others, but about himself too. Because in Joshua chapter 14, God shows up in his tent, I believe. That's my version. Knock, knock. Joshua, you home? Yes, I And then God said to him, What are you doing there? Since there is still a lot of territory, territory you have not conquered. Oh, okay, okay. So Joshua somehow had stagnated. He had, I can say, he had stopped walking. Mm -hmm. 
They took Jericho, they took Ai. They took the southern part of the land, they took some part of the northern land. Then they thought, okay, that's good enough. <laughs> we did a lot. But if you are a foreigner, and people are following you, you cannot just stop when you want to stop. Because if you stop, others will stop. This is what he said about the Welsh revival. I have told you several times. Evan Roberts was the man God used in Wales. Evan Roberts. Evan Roberts. In few months, thousands of people were saved. People were saved in the streets. They began to cry, bow their knees, gave their life to God, and then look for a church. Underground, in the coal mines, miners were overwhelmed by the Spirit. Were saved in the mine. And the reports say that the horses could not understand them because they stopped cursing. They are such a bad language. <laughs> the F word was always there. <laughs> Hundreds of times. <laughs> Even the horses understand the F word. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, because the heart was changed, language changed. All the bars closed because nobody wants to drink anymore. They drank in the streets. They, they brought money home because they didn't drink all the salary away. So maybe their wives were short. Money? <laughs> Did you steal the money or? <laughs> Did you rob a bank? No, I didn't drink. I didn't use all the money in the bar. With my so called friends, drinking friends. Even Roberts was the man, the forerunner of that. Even Robert, the the Robert, But one day something happened to him. And he stopped running. In few weeks, everything stopped. That's why God wants more than one forerunner. This church, God wants forerunners. Maybe not everybody can become a forerunner immediately. But some must become, then more will become, then more will become. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, so they, they said, yeah, we will serve the Lord too. But then verse 19, Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. For he's a holy God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Joshua is the pastor. The pastor said, me and my family will serve the Lord. The whole church, like one man, repeat, we will serve the Lord too. Whoa, that's heaven on earth. That's heaven on earth. Amen, hallelujah, what a church. But Joshua knew. Words can be cheap. That's why he said what he said. 
Not to condemn them. Not to minimize or uh, underestimate their good, good intentions. It's good to have good intentions. But it's better to test the intentions. So the next thing which happened was the testing, testing time. So if you want to become a foreigner, you have to accept to be tested. Years ago, Jonathan David had a statement, he said, train, tested, taken. Train, tested, taken. So here Joshua is testing them. No, 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 you cannot serve the Lord. Because he's a holy God. The same thing happened to Peter. John 21. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Peter was famous for cheap words. Peter was He had a whole notebook full of good proclamations. I love you. I will, even if everybody leaves you, I will not leave you. If you go through hell, I will go through hell with you. He had a whole list of good. Peter was not a bad man. He was a good man. Jesus knew he was a good man. That's why Jesus had to test him. Because at Pentecost, Peter had to step into the shoes of a forerunner. And when you have these shoes on, you have to wash yourself where you go. So Peter, together with the eleven, just spoke in Jerusalem. What happened? People ran to him yeah. and said, What shall we do? Immediately he had people running after him. That could be a shocking experience. See? You know, maybe 1,500 people coming to you. Ma, we are ready. <laughs> Tell us what to do, where to go, where not to do, where not to go. Tell us, we'll do it. Say something. Say something. Where? Ma, I'm following you. Where are you going? She knows. She's a foreigner. I am a foreigner. God wants foreigners. I say God wants foreigners. You have to accept the testing. Oh pastor, I will follow you. Alright. Let's see the next three months. How is going? I will, I will, ma, we will follow you in the worship. First Sunday, the hands are up there. Next Sunday, they are here. <laughs> Next Sunday, they are here. <laughs> then only one hand. <laughs> then, ooh, worship is long today, very long today. I'm tired. Let me sit down. Are you following or are you not following? <laughs> I'm not saying we have to raise our hands. Just an example to illustrate. 
Accept the test. It's no way. One of, I think it's James who said, don't consider the test of fire as a strange thing happening to you. Uh, don't think that the test of fire you go through is something strange. It's normal. Jesus said, let's cross to the other side. Let's, let's shake the region of the Capulis. Are you in? Yes, we are in. And the waves and the storm. Ooh. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Are you seeing the waves? Can you feel the wind in your hair? We are dying, we are drowning. I just thought, okay, that's the dream team I have. Thank you for the... Very thankful. Do you have some reserve team? Another one? It's like, it's like a football game. You have the players and you have people warming up. <laughs> Preparing. That's the reserve, you know. God, do you have somebody else ready to, you know, because these are not the right ones. It's called testing time. Shut up and row the boat. Uh -huh. We are all wet. Be wet and roll. <laughs> Keep rowing the boat. Yeah, but the waves, the waves is okay. Keep rowing the boat. I believe when they came to the other side, they had picked up the lesson. And they knew in their heart we did not pass the test. So, okay. Let me finish, then we have a break. Okay, accept the testing. The last one. Choose accountability. Okay. There is a difference between accepting the test and accountability. This is God testing you. You have to accept it. God will arrange a situation. He will make a setup for you. And he's waiting to see how you handle it. It's not to bother you or to harm you, it's just to test you. But he does that. Can be, I don't know, can be you don't pass the exam. Oh, my. I commit suicide. Okay. Oh, I will drop everything. I will live in the streets. Do it again. If you need help, ask her. She knows. <laughs> she passed the test. It was brutal. Right? Yes. Brutal test. But she passed it. I'm not, you know, elevating her, just an example. I, I know that. I know you have passed some tests too. So God, I'm not saying God arranged that for you. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. 
Because God is watching us. Okay. Now Bob is sitting there and this happens. Ooh, they are talking about that. Man, I will. Uh, after she passed the test, I will talk with them. <laughs> I will beat them up. I won't treat my daughter like that. But that's for later. Now is I have to see how Bob is handling that situation. That's God working. Accountability. I choose. That's my decision. Nobody will ask you to. Be accountable. You must choose it. Mm-hmm. With me? Uh, yeah. So, be accountable. Give a report. From time to time to the pastors. Because they are your spiritual fathers. Not once a week, but maybe every three months, four months. Okay, Pastor Bagi, this is what God is doing in my life. This is how I handle this situation. This one, I didn't well. This one, I didn't do well. I need your help. This one, I have no clue what to do. What would you do if you were in that situation? That's being accountable. Where do you see, where do I see that? Here, at the end of the chapter. Verse 26. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there under the terebin that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be witness against God against us, for it has heard all the words. Then he sent them away. That's accountability. We don't have a stone. We will not record your report. Smartphone. Played for you in six months. You said that. How is that? <laughs> no, no. It's you. You choose accountability. Why did he do that? <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because this nation was patient. In Exodus chapter 19, God said, You will be a holy nation to me. You will be the head and not the tail of the nations. What does that mean? It means the whole nation had to be a forerunner nation. So what they were doing, how they were doing it, was important because they set a standard for others. That's why Joshua said that to them. Because he knew, I've been the forerunner. My good friend Caleb has been a forerunner. We did very well. We're not perfect, but we did well. And now this is a new generation. And you have to be forerunners too. Because this is not only Joshua's calling and Caleb's calling. 
This is Israel's calling for the whole nation. You will be a treasure to me, God said. A peculiar a kingdom of priests. Whoa. You will be foreigners. Other nations will look at you and think, Whoa. What a nation. I follow the news. If you, if you know my Facebook page, you will see some uploads from time to time. I follow the nation of Israel. Not because I'm an Israel fanatic. Some Christians, they are fanatics. Jerusalem and the Written on the belt. <laughs> they drink water from the Jordan River because it's holy water. That's, that's nonsense. But if you follow the nation of Israel, you will see. You will see. You know Alibaba.com, the huge company? Maybe the biggest online platform in the whole world. Jack, Jackie Chan is the CEO of Alibaba. He came to Jerusalem. And he brought all these political, financial, business top leaders. And he said, there is no other nation like Israel. No. Today I saw on Facebook that the chief of the whole innovation department of Samsung, chief innovator, said there is no place like this nation in the whole world. God says, you will be the foreigner. Microsoft is there. Microsoft. Apple is there. Google is there. Even it's a small, it's like a, it's like a stamp. Small nation. Surrounded by missiles and bombs and drones and everything. <laughs> that's, that's the last place you want to put your company. Last place, the most dangerous place. But God is protecting you. Amen. 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 God is looking for foreigners. God needs foreigner churches. This church can become a foreigner church in the nation. I'm not saying you will be the head and not the tail. That's his word. <laughs> But you can be a testimony, strong testimony, how church can be. Even in the financial area. Because most churches here are depending on money from outside. Sponsorship from America or whatever. Korea. I mean, for many years, for many years in Eastern Europe, 80, if, if Americans stop sponsoring, 80% of the churches will shut down. Eighty percent. If Americans said we don't support you anymore, eighty percent. That's not okay. I say that's not okay. So our base in Romania is self-financing now. 
Financing themselves. We can break that. And become a foreigner. Church. You can become a foreigner man, a foreigner woman for the kingdom. Amen. So that's Joshua 24. Joshua was a foreigner. But he spoke to the whole nation because he knew. It's not about me because I'm, I'm going home soon. It's not about Caleb because Caleb is going home soon. It's not about Moses because Moses is home already. It's about you, all the families. Are you with me? There is a call to become a foreigner. But that's a call with responsibilities. Because then you will have followers. Whoa. Then they will come to you and say, mm, what do I do now? You cannot say, talk with Pastor Suda. You must know certain things. Bring them to the house. Let them be trained, sharpened. Like you were trained. And sharpened. That's church. For me, that's church. Training place. Amen. Training place. Raise foreigners. Which God, whom God will locate different places in Mongolian society. Are you getting this? Yes. So Joshua wants to position them. It was so funny before we start. I was asking Boggy, do you have the word position in Mongolian? She said yes. And Pastor Boggy said, position. Do you understand English? Position. To position yourself. Maybe you are not a foreigner yet. But there is a call. And you must hear that call. Okay, when am I going to preach? It's not about preaching. It's about your everyday life. <laughs> I mean, there are, there are only four Sundays a month. How many people can preach four Sundays? <laughs> preaching just a small part of it, an important part. But she must be a foreigner when she works. Pooja must be a foreigner when she works. Tamra must be a foreigner at the tailor company. When he mentions people, praise for them. <laughs> Not loud, of course, and <laughs> otherwise <laughs> it was his last work day. <laughs> no, but you can train your mind, your heart. <laughs> God is working outside the church. He's talking with one here, he's leading one them, he's touching this one. And one day your God will cross their road. Then you are there. The right person at the right place in the right moment. And if you are sharp in your mind, the forward in your mind, whoa. Thank you, God. They are fruit. So this is Joshua 24. <laughs> Version 2.0. <laughs> I had it one year ago. <laughs> but I want to go through it once more. Because sometimes we have to do it again. Am I doing it again in two years? 
Yes. 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 We find more gold in the river, more silver in the river. Amen. The goal is becoming forward. Amen. Amen. Let's have a break. Ten minutes. Are we ready? Yes. Instruction yes. about forerunners. Yes. yes. So don't don't think. Okay, I will be a forerunner. Just listen. First listen. Now I want to speak about Joshua. How he became a forerunner. How did that happen? And but let me make this statement first. Foreigners are indispensable in times of transition. We cannot do without them. We need them. We need them. You read the Bible, you will see that in these very important times of transition, God brought somebody on the scene to help, to facilitate. Because transitions are not easy. Because in the transition, things change. To become married brings a lot of change. That's why sometimes people who are, they are dreaming about being not married. Why did I marry? <laughs> because it brings many changes. <laughs> we discover how different we are. Whoa. I never thought she was like that. Yeah, but she is like that. So get used to it, find a way. God brought you together and work it out. So transition, going from being a teenager to be a young person is a big change. I remember going from high school to university, a big change. Because in a French high school, in those days, 100 years ago, we had to be there at all sessions. University, we could do whatever we want. We could drink coffee, and go to a bar and have fun with friends. That was a huge change. Because in high school, the program kept us disciplined. But in university, the discipline had to come from the inside. Oh, I should go to this lesson. But I'm so sleepy. I think I will sleep one half, half an hour more. Uh, don't forget your diploma. So it's a big change. If you migrate from one nation to another, it can be a big change. Culture, food, language, mentality, education, the whole social system is different. Whoa. I admire people migrating from one nation to a very different nation. I moved from France to Denmark. It's very similar. It was not a big challenge for me. 
from Europe. To move from France to America, that would be more difficult. <laughs> from Mongolia to Cuba, <laughs> from Cuba to Mongolia. Whoa! Cuba, Cuba is more Where am I? Where? <laughs> <laughs> Things are so different. Mindsets. You can easily offend people. Yeah. My younger brother who was working for as a salesman for a big company. In Europe. So they take a training how German communicate, how Italian communicate, how French people communicate. Because one one word and you lost your contract. <laughs> if you work with French people, you have to remind them. You know, remember the agreement? If you say that to a German, he will say, What do you think we are? Of course, we know we are. <laughs> So transition, whoa. So God knows that. To take Peter from where he was to where God brought him in Jerusalem, whoa, that's a big transition. And I think the transition was bigger for the eleven. Regarding Peter. I mean, the transition of Peter was more difficult for the eleven because they knew him. Why should he speak on our behalf in the Atomic Coast? Because we heard him speak on our behalf before. So when God used Peter there, they had to transit. They said, whoa, that's a new Peter. So they also had to, they also had to migrate concerning Peter. All right, all right. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> But then 3,000 came in. Whoa, Peter, good job. But they had to, you know, oh, okay, Peter, why Peter? Why not John? John is a loving person. Peter, he can cut ears and When he baptized them, he will keep them in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what Peter can do? We never, never know what Peter can do. John, we can trust with Peter. Whoa. But Peter was a forerunner. So he went forward. And they came after him. Um, so in transitional time, God needs foreigners. Jesus was a foreigner. Yeah, the firstborn of many brothers. That was a big transition from old covenant to new covenant. My goodness. John the Baptist was a foreigner. He was the voice. Speaking about who is coming. <laughs> Big transition. Elijah was a foreigner. Yeah. I will show you something about Elijah. It will blow your mind. But now back to Joshua. So, this statement is important. And I believe that we are in days of transition. We have to walk out of usual Christianity. It's good, it's okay, God is happy with it, but there is some another dimension. Kingdom Christianity. So we have to migrate to that. That's why foreigners are necessary. 
But churches, God needs forerunner churches. Without condemning anybody, without offending anybody, if you go to some churches, you know this is not church. It cannot be church. So church has moved far away from the original model. But to come back to that, God is foreigners. Come back to that. Joshua was one of them. So let me show you certain elements of Joshua's life. Number one. <coughs> he watched. Moses since his youth. He watched Moses since his youth. Let me give you some passages for your notes. Numbers 11:28. We will read some of them. Exodus, Exodus 24, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, <laughs> Foreigners don't sleep. <laughs> yeah, listen in. Otherwise, don't run, you know. I mean, you can run, but don't have somebody following you because you have not listened carefully. Alright, 28. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, from his youth, so Joshua was around Moses since his youth. Assisting. Need some water. Need some something else. Not not you know being his wife you know but assisting him in his role for the kingdom okay. Let's go to Exodus 24. Because sometimes we think, whoa, man, Joshua, I won't be like Joshua. I won't be part of the Joshua generation. Joshua here and Joshua there. <laughs> you have to understand his life. He had a life. He didn't, he didn't drop from heaven like Mr. Bean. Boom. Mr. No, he had a life. He had been assisting Moses since he was a young man. We don't know, 15 maybe. Joshua. Who asked him to do that? His parents or Moses? We don't know. Maybe that was a desire in his heart. Maybe there was already a spirit inside of him. Oh, I, will, I will help Moses. I will, I will help him. He needs help. I will help him. Not to promote himself, not to show others I'm, I'm Moses' assistant. Chief assistant, by the way. Chief assistant. No, no. It was a desire, clean. It was a clean desire. Okay, Exodus 24, 13. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God, and he said, etc., etc. So Moses stood up. 
And Joshua stood up. <coughs> which means Joshua was next to Moses. <coughs> what did he do? We don't know. He was there. He had decided, I will stay close yeah. to this woman. Yeah. Not for ambition, maybe I can be his successor. No. God will never promote a person like that. There was a desire. Whoa. I will stay close to Moses. I will watch him. I will observe how he walks with God. Pick up some lessons. Be a good observer. Amen. Don't just go to church. Observe your leaders. Learn something. Pick up something. Well, I'm listening to your teaching. We don't have to teach everything. Certain things you can pick up by yourself. Yeah. Yes, no. Our children, we brush their teeth, one day they brush their bad teeth. Some of them they don't want help, so you have toothpaste all over the face. The face is clean, but the teeth are not. <laughs> but they pick up things. Some children they imitate their parents. Imitate. As a young man, very often I stood like this, with my knees like that. I don't know why. One of my sons did exactly the same. People say, oh, that's Philip's son. How do you know? They pick up things. So Joshua was there next to Moses. When Moses went up the mountain, Joshua. I will walk with him. Uh, okay, 24, uh, 33, 11. Uh, thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Whoa. Joshua could not enter the tent. Joshua was not afraid. He was the border. He was not afraid. He was not afraid. He was the border. He was not afraid. He was not afraid. He was not afraid. He was not had most of our children God is good today. <laughs> oh, my daughter, she could win my face. Daughters can win father's face. <laughs> Sometimes we had a lot of guests for a while. Then we draw some borders. We had too many guests. And she, she, she was very curious. Like me. So when a guest came, rang at the door. I went up to open the door. She came with me. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? When the guest came in, she didn't look at the guest, she looked at my face. Oh, I think I will go back to my room. Oh, whoa, they're going to drink coffee and cake. Oh, yeah, I will join you. I think Joshua was a good observer. Like I said yesterday, Psalm, Psalm 1, there was a delight for the word of God. There was a delight. Psalm 1. 
Blessed is the man whose delight is for the word of God. There was something in him. I, I, I have to get that thing. <laughs> man said to me recently, Steffi said to me, he said, you know, he said, oh, Philip, I have, I have to take two months off and then I will travel with you everywhere for two months. Maybe some of you think that will be too much, isn't it? It depends on the heart. If one person will say, no, thank you, stay where you are. <laughs> For another person we say, okay, come with me two weeks. Let's travel together, let's talk together. I mean, he was here with me years, some years ago. And it shows there is a desire to pick up things and learn things. Because he is a forerunner as well. Okay, you got it? He watched Moses since his youth. Pay attention. When Ma leads the worship, or this young man leads the worship, look at them. No, I'm looking at Jesus. Okay, look at Jesus. We can learn from one another. Somebody in the church has a strong prayer life, prayer life. Hey, listen, pay attention. Don't copy them. Don't speak like they speak and shout like they shout. Or... No. Pick up the spirit of it. Observe. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Okay. Number two, he took his share in the war. He took his share, there was a war, and Joshua took a share in that. Exodus 17, verse 8 to 10. It's a, it's a famous story, let me just tell you what it is. They had to fight the Amalekites. Then Moses said, Joshua, you do the fight. But I, Aaron, and her, we will stand up there and we will stand for you before God. Yeah. Moses, Aaron, and her. And who? Her? No, no, not Miriam. Her. Yeah, H U R. Don't call your children her. So Moses, Aaron and her on the hill, raising their hands. Joshua in the valley fighting the Amalekites. So he took his share. He played his role in that war. He didn't say, Moses, I'm just the assistant. I can bring some water for you, but in a war, too dangerous. I have a wife and children, nothing for me. But he went and took his share. Moses saw that. God saw that. Uh -huh. This young man is not passing, he's not on reserve bench, he's on, the, he's on the playing field. Take your share in things here in the church. 
but everything is working so well. Yeah, because some of us, some of you are extra busy with that. What about helping? Take your share of the finances of the church. But you know, everybody looks so well, everybody has food, you know, so you know. No, take your share. Because the baggage still look well, well. Yeah, they do that. But still, take your share. Amen. Amen. The young people want, want to go to FGC. <coughs> All right, I will give something. I will bring my share. I want the next generation in this church to do well. I want them to be forerunner in their own generation. You understand that? I will take my share. In the worship, take your share. Ooh, the boy is doing so well, Tim Ray on the bass, and the young man on the guitar. Ooh, this is awesome. Okay, on Sunday, I will sit next to you. And I will listen to you. Where is your share? I do so well. I do so well. Bring your share. That's how they won the battle. Joshua could not win alone. Moses could not win alone. But this young assistant man with no title and no stripes and no medals. Just a sister. To be shared, okay. I will fight. I mean, I need you. Otherwise, my wife is a widow. So please, raise your hands. Aaron and her, you better support Moses' hands. Because I am in the body fighting the Americans. Yeah. But he took his share. God saw that. So he didn't just become a foreigner. Doom foreigner. No. God watched him walk. Watch Moses to his share in the war. Number, number three. He was on the mountain with Moses. He was on the mountain with Moses. And we had that already. Exodus 24. Exodus 24. That's the word. So Moses took him with him on the mountain. He took God's presence and God came down and Joshua was there. Maybe he said nothing. He was just there. Just uh, inhale the presence. <sighs> Why was it important? Because one day he will be the forerunner. Uh -huh. yes. yes. In three weeks I'm going to Romania. I will bring three Danish young people with me. One English person with me. Have a taste of that. Okay, are you with me? So he was down the mountain with Moses. And God saw him. He didn't have to, you know. All right, let me share something. Some people, if you if you bring them somewhere, they are just the superstar of this of the moment. 
Just be quiet and be there. And learn something. Observe. Watch what is going on. Take some notes. Remember certain things. Oh, that was it. Oh, that was interesting. Oh, so this another time. I'm ready. Number four. He went into the promised land. He was one of the spies which Moses sent into the promised land. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Numbers 14 verse 8. Numbers 14 verse 8. 10. So Moses sent people into the promised land. You remember the story? To watch out. How are the people? How big are the cities? Are they armed? Are they strong? Are they equipped? Come back and give a report. So Moses gave them a responsibility. And they have to come back and be accountable. But we know the story. Ten of them said, that's a hopeless project. We can't do that. Joshua tore their clothes. You know what? God saw that. He saw that reaction. And the father said to the son, Watch these two men. Look at Joshua then. Oh, this man. Are you with me? This is the path for becoming a foreman. We can take it. They are big, but God is bigger. God will give us the land. That was his words. God can give us the land. We are like grasshoppers, yes. But God is much bigger than big cities, big walls. But God promised that land to our forefather Abraham, we will have that land. I believe God heard these words in heaven. So as you can see, everything here is about his daily life, normal life. He's not on the platform. He's not behind the pulpit. He has no microphone. Just daily life. But God watched him. Uh -huh. You understand that? Let's we give you two more. Number five. He saw the fragility of the people. He saw the fragility of the people. He saw he didn't only see God's power. He also saw the reality of the situation. Whoa. So Joshua saw that. And God watched him. 
Because one day he will be the forerunner, he will be the leader. So God, God had to show him how fragile people can be. To find out how does Joshua handle that. Exodus 32. Verse 17. Are you still awake? Yes. Yeah. Alright, 3217. I introduce you for Mr. Joshua. So, all these pep talk about Joshua generation, give me a break. Watch, there is a lot of Preaching about Joshua generation. Do you want to be part of the Joshua generation? Yeah. If yes, then study his life. How he walked with God consistently. 3217. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. But he said, It is not the sound of shouting for victory, or the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing that I hear. So Joshua was there in the picture. And he saw and he heard and he spoke with Moses. Verse, verse 19, And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses angered burn hot. Whoa. And he threw tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Moses took the calf that they had made and burned it with fire, ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the people of Israel drink it. Oh, good medicine. <laughs> so that was an intensive moment, you may say. Very intensive. But God wanted him to see that because that's real life. We love is not only being on the mountain and heaven is open and no. The angels are crying holy, holy. <laughs> That's where Peter wants to build some tents, you know, build some tents. So Joshua saw, he heard. All that. He saw the calf. And while he saw the calf, <laughs> I can't imagine that. It's like, woo! I don't imagine While he saw the calf, he was shocked. He heard an explosion. It was Moses. <laughs> Moses exploded. Anger, he was hot. I'm sure Joshua took one step back. Watch out. He saw that. And I think he picked up something here. He understood. Whoa, did you see it? If Moses can be that angry, how much more God? 
the people he took out of Egypt. He carried them like a father carried his son in his arms. He spoke to them at Mount Sinai. He said to them, You are my people. If you hear my voice, keep my covenant. I will make you a kingdom of priests. I will make you a holy nation. You shall be a treasure for me. Peculiar people, special people for me. And now these people are building a golden animal. And they said to the animal, now he is our God, he will lead us. I think all heaven was burning hot. Even Aaron was a mess. Totally. I mean, remember what he said? They bring me the gold and I put the gold in the fire and out came the cup. <laughs> what explanation is that? <laughs> so Aaron washed his hands, not me, the people. <laughs> Moses was mad. He was mad. <laughs> I think there is place for that. <laughs> I think God can be mad sometimes. <laughs> mad at me, mad at my church, my what? What on earth are they doing? And I gave my son for them. And have all this stuff going on. Oh, I think Joshua had to see that. At the FGC, I had a tough session. The last one was tough. I had to be a little bit tough. And I'm 71, so it's okay. So I was tough with them. And then last week, uh, one of the young men who was there said, Whoa, you were tough in that session. But, it's, but then he said, it was okay, I learned something. You know, the kingdom is a tough kingdom. Before the end of this week, I will, I will try to explain what I think the gates of hell is. I asked myself for uh, years, what, are, what is the gates of hell? What is it? Since Jesus said, I will be my church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. What is that gates of hell? I can share with you what I, what I think it is. I'm not saying it is all that, but I think I got the impression. So the gates of hell are the gates of hell. So when we say let your kingdom come, whoa, there will be tensions and clashes and I mean read the life of Jesus. Whoa, it was not just one day he said to the Pharisees, the devil is your father. Talk with him. Sometimes you just turn around and leave them. Somebody went after him. You offended them. He said nothing. Just keep going. <laughs> we don't realize how strong he was. All heaven was on him. I mean, was he was like an atomic bomb. Yeah. A power, power center. That's why the devil wanted to destroy him because he knew 
This Jesus reproduces himself out of the picture. Maybe we can fix one power center, but if there is one million power centers, and you like Bata or Forerunner Church there, the Forerunner Church there, and in that church, half of the church are good forerunners. And the second half are on the way to become good forerunners. And the devil knows. This is going to be difficult for us. That's why gates of hell are powerful, they are brutal. The God raises foreigners, especially in terms of position. Because in terms of transition, things are fragile. You are insecure. You understand, you understood a lot, but now the new things you don't understand them all. But you want them, you step into it, and you don't know what you step into. You know, it's like, oh, it's fragile, it's insecure. That's why the foreigners are important. That's why John the Baptist was such an important figure. He spoke out in the wilderness. People came to him and some attacked him. Jesus was a foreigner. Want to take Israel out of one place to another place, new covenant. But still, when he was a baby, Herod and the Pharisees want to kill him already. He was fragile. Mary was fragile. Joseph was fragile. Everything was fragile. But it was fragile and powerful at the same time. So sometimes we feel fragile, we feel weak, we feel insecure, but we can be powerful at the same time. Seventy people in Denmark. We're only seventy, we're not seventy thousand, we're seventy. We want to change that nation. How can that happen? We just have seventy. Fragile, insecure. Can we do that? At the same time, we feel, yes, we can do that. <coughs> Let your kingdom come. Let's receive the kingdom. Let's make space for the kingdom. Let the kingdom begin to rule our lives. Let the kingdom take us some places. The city is fragile. I can imagine Mary and Joseph and the little child on a donkey on the way to Egypt. What is that? And Herod is mad and the Pharisees are mad. And these two sweet young people on the donkey with the small baby on the way to Egypt. Oh, is that revival? <laughs> huh? Is that revival? Small family, just one baby, two young people. Is that revival? Can they change the nation? Yes, they changed the whole world. All Jerusalem was shaken. So there is, there is a fragility. At the same time, we know there is a spirit of strength inside of us. Joshua, he saw the fragility of people. Oh. I'm sure he was shocked by the words of Aaron. Whoa, Aaron! 
The high priest. How can you do that? What do you mean by the animal jumped out of the fire? What, what is that? Aaron, you disappoint me. What kind of high priest are you? He saw that. So the anger of Moses, Moses was all right in his face. <laughs> and his beard was shining. <laughs> That's not the reality of life. It's not. Sometimes life is brutal. You have to face it and handle it. Sometimes I'm frustrated. That young man, he was shocked. I've never seen you that frustrated. Never seen that before. I have a nice French pasta. But in that session, whoa, I went for that. And I keep repeating all the young people that I used to go for that. <laughs> because it's real. It's real. Joshua saw that. Come and follow and you have to see reality. Oh, three minutes. I can do the last one. No, I think we still finished. So, if you look at this, there is no public thing. Yeah. <laughs> Everyday life. <laughs> If God did not put it in the Bible, we would know nothing. Because it didn't happen on the platform. It happened behind the scene. Behind the scene, where nobody saw anything, God was preparing this young man. In all anonymity. Nobody knew. And suddenly, he was there. And then we say, wait, the Joshua generation. Oh, yeah. Get the Joshua life first. Interesting enough, it's the same with Elijah. I showed you yesterday. First Kings 17, 1, boom, Elijah is there. I am standing before God. Oh, how long did you do that? <laughs> we don't know. His parents <laughs> is Hidden behind the scene. Uh -huh. God had shaped him, talked to him. God has met with him. Because Elijah stood before God, they had talked together. And one day, <sighs> and he said, there will be no rain before I give the permission for that. Okay. Who are you? Where do you come from? Who are your, who are your, who are your, who are your parents? I stand before God. And I tell you, no rain before I speak. Yeah. In all anonymity, nobody knew. John the Baptist, exactly the same. We hear about his birth. 
We only know that he grew in stature before God and man. That's all. The same with Jesus. Jesus said. We read about his birth. Circumcision. Then 12 years in the temple. Then nothing from 12 to 30. 18 years. Not one word. Yeah. And suddenly, whoa, the kingdom of God is at hand. <laughs> Who are you? Follow me. <laughs> All that was shaped, nobody knew. Mary knew Joseph knew. Elizabeth knew. Zachariah knew. Very few people knew. Something was happening with somebody behind the scenes. In a church like this, you don't know what God is doing. We didn't, have, we didn't even have to tell everybody what God is doing. Just keep your fathers informed. Let God work. Because he wants four words. Amen. Amen. You're catching this? Amen. So all that okay. hidden is hidden behind the scenes. One day, God said, Moses, Lay your hands on him. He is the one. And transfer your wisdom and your insight. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been in churches where, people, where the pastor said, Oh, Philip, can you pray for everybody in the church and transfer and partition? I, I did that for some years because, oh yes, I want to do that. I got it for free, I give it for free. That's the bad But it's not what happened between Moses and Joshua. It's not. Oh, but all that, all that have been taking place for years. And then one day, maybe not even a Sunday morning, maybe it was a Tuesday night at midnight. <laughs> Moses lay his hands. Not only on Joshua, but on all that. Not just the person Joshua. But on all that walk, all that impartation landed on the platform, this platform. Yeah. And then, whoa, impartation in Joshua rose and became a forerunner for the nation. Whoa. God wants forwards. Our churches are called to be fallen churches. This church, some of you must begin to think like that. But walk. Walk. Pastor Suda, can I be your assistant? Pastor Suda, please. Yeah, let us see you worshipping first. Assist Ma when she leads the worship. Oh, you want me to be there? Yeah, I want, I want. I want to assist when leading the worship. No, stay where you are. Assist her from where you are. Raise your hand, push in the spirit. Everybody wants to be seen. What is that? What is that gene coming from? Assist her from your place. 
If you're a responsible church member, if you take your share in the house, you assist them. If you bring your finances, your financial share in the house, you assist them. Oh, I remember this young man who wanted to assist Dr. Jonathan David, <coughs> carry his bag and his Bible. <laughs> Today is not even in the network anymore. Now we have this public attention. No, work with him on a daily basis. In your life and in the house. Take your share of the war. Amen. That's, that's the path to become a foreigner. If you walk like that, some people will follow you. They will pick it up. They say, Whoa, man, I want, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. Don't think you need to be 35 years. You can be already becoming a foreigner when you're 15. Age is not a problem. Father, we thank you tonight. This call coming to us, all of us. Even to me. Even the day I retire, I will still be a forerunner. I will still train people, sharpen young people, shape people, and help them to become foreigner. So I become a foreigner for them, and they will become foreigners for others. Oh God in heaven, help us. Help us. Let your kingdom come. Help us to receive your kingdom. Help us to make space for the kingdom. Help us to let the kingdom rule our inner man. Our emotions, our attitudes, our thoughts, our marriages, our finances, our professional careers. Let the kingdom rule all that. Let the kingdom take us places. Where you will use us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.